Okay, <clears throat> we're going to go to strategic turn D, and we do the victory check. Noah has one, ally withdrawal phase. We do have four resources, amazingly, so the withdrawal does not move to the major uh, occurrence. So now we do the white reinforcements, they have none. Uh, the red reinforcements, they have the Konarmia. Uh, so they get to put this wonderful unit in anywhere that they can trace, supply, any city. And I think they're going to definitely go... Yeah. I think we're gonna go over here and we're gonna put them in there because we need to start cutting this force apart and I'm, I'm bringing those horses over, they're great. And they're one of the few units that if you also see that on the reduced side, they still have a positive attack modifier. I mean, just positively, uh, ridiculously good unit, a really good unit, okay. So that was the red. They also get, now we do, what do we do, white replacements? Yeah, we do white replacement step. <clears throat> so what do we have? The Siberians actually do have one good unit to bring back. That is the Siberian unit here. That's going to come back on its uh, reduced side, so that's going to be a... Uh, but it's still something. And now get put into Omsk. Good thing I didn't completely sit in Omsk. I wouldn't have been able to get that unit out, so... That's going to be a little more for the force in the north to handle. And the south basically gets its choice of Cossacks. And I can't take the Don because we're actually sitting in the Don Cossack spot. So we can only take the Tarek Cossacks and the Tareks will go there. The Red Army get, has only lost two of its forces. And um, this Turkmenistan, this Turkestan army, and the third army. So we'll bring both those back. And I think we're going to put this guy here. Actually, I need to take Petrograd. Holy, but jolly moly. I need to take Petrograd. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a unit here in Vybetsk. Yeah, we'll keep that, that garrison there. But we'll put a unit in Vybetsk. And then this Turkish, Turkestan unit is going to go... Like, I wonder if this should really just be a unique unit, because it seems kind of weird that I could just put it back in a battle somewhere else, but I think we're going to put it back here in the north, and we'll put it at... at Trubiansk, or whatever that city is. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, by the way, I know I've been through these cities. It's kind of ridiculous to not have been there. Okay. And that's the red replacement, so they've, getting, they've gotten everything they need. We've gotten, the whites got what they need. Yes, they have. Okay, so now we move on to the next turn, and it's going to be turn 11, September 1919. Let's roll for initiative. Let's see, that is gonna be an eight. So let's see what they get. Oh wait, oh it's a tie. <laughs> what am I saying, one and eight? That's a tie. So the reds are gonna take initiative. And let's see what kind of random event they get. Or actually the whites will get. A five. Oh, amphibious invasion or cavalry raid. Well, we have both those, so we get nothing. And the reds will get a five as well. And that is white corruption. All AFSR, Siberian, Northern, and Northwestern white infantry and cavalry add one to the rally rolls. So they have to, basically they can only rally on a one. That's pretty, pretty ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> so I think we're going to pick... Ooh, some interesting choices here. Hmm. All right, let me think about which one I want to pick first for the reds, and when we come back, we will finish the rest. Well, we'll just see what who goes first. Okay, after looking it over, we see that nice little uh, 
dividing line on this front between the south and the southwest. And I'm going to choose the southwest because with the addition of the Konomiya, I think we're going to really um, be able to have the firepower to take down this unit or take down at least maybe to eliminate or at least push them out of uh, the victory hex there. So I think we will choose the southwest as our first jet. Basically, it's a very easy one, right? You just go here and attack. Um, actually, we can stack. I forgot. Oh my goodness, we can stack. Look at that. It's because Frunze, Frunze is a man. He taught him how to stack. All right, so we're going to attack this guy. We've got 12, 2, what is it? I think he has 3, right? Yeah, 3. No defense. That is a 4 to 1 attack. Oh, by the way, oh, we didn't do strategic movement, but honestly, I don't think anybody could use it. No. Mm, technically. Okay, technically, okay, I keep forgetting strategic movement. Nobody could have really used it here. I mean, I could slip. Oh, that's a lie. Okay, well. And the truth is that I would probably have the option of doing such a nice strategic movement. Let me see if I can move that tank. The strategic movement. I don't know if I can, but let's see if I can. Uh, in movement and friendly control, not neutral city. We're good there. You know, must have both rail and mover. Can do rail, let's see. The white player can move up to two manpower units of faction units and two, so yeah, I can move the tank. The question is if I want to move the tank, but I can move up to two manpower points. Which means I could evacuate a guy out of here, which would probably be the best thing to do, because I don't think um, these guys are going to hold out for too long. But then to put them here, when do I take two of these um, crack units out of here? I don't think so. I think we're going to keep that together. So let's take this Caucasus unit because I don't think anybody else. Yeah. Even though he kind of hurts the Mundi, he will strategically move into the city just to give it one more little unit, which maybe, hopefully, is not detrimental with this negative two. Because we already have another negative two, so that's negative four. Hmm. I wonder if it would be worth it to move two guys out of here. Not the tank, though. And the other thing is we can't keep... Uh, the Kubans can actually go pretty far. Ooh, these are some really good units, and I'd hate to lose them to that onslaught. So I think we'll just keep them there, and we are going to just do that. That'll just be how it has to be. But then I probably would have attacked here, knowing that. Um... Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of cheating because I would have actually have known that, and I probably would have altered my plans and probably attacked here just so I could weaken that even further for the same reasons I'm trying to attack here. So we'll just keep it that way, and the reds won't use it either. I kind of goofed. The reds really couldn't really use it. The whites, oh, they could have used it with the Terek Cossacks. That is very very true. And I definitely well, I could not have moved them over there. And I can't put them there. Well, we'll just say I would have brought them here. Yeah, we'll just say I would have brought them there. Yep. Um, okie dokie. And then the reds would not have used... Well, they would have actually used it. They would have done... <sighs> they would have taken this army unit here because it's holding the Polish because we put that guy there. It's one, two, three, four, so he can hold the Polish... Um, Whatever, and we will train him up to Tavier. Yeah, so that way he can get a little closer and hopefully eventually get to that front. 
Would be fast. Yeah, it's the best place to go, I think. Yeah, because I can't get to Piskov. All right. All right, so that's what we've done. All right, back to the main battle at hand. All right, so... Dun, 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 dun. We got, what, 4, 8, 12? What do we say? That's 4 to 1. Where did this dice go? Oh, here we go. Two and a four results. Let's see, so that's uh, 12 plus, what is that? Four, so that's 16. Um, and they have four, five, so that's three, so that's a plus 13. Oof, that's bad. <laughs> that's a capital D retreat, so yeah. He takes it, he dies. So that taking that was a Pyrrhic victory, as they say. Oh yeah, and this Makno dude would have definitely uh, flipped to the communist one. And this dude will go one, two, and we will advance. All right. So that was the southwest shit. Now we put the other ones in the cup. All right. <clears throat> AFSR gets to respond somewhat. So, yeah, probably a good thing I didn't move more troops in there because that would have just been maybe not the best thing. Although they probably wouldn't have had as good of odds, they still would have gotten the same kind of results. So that wouldn't have been as good. Okay, so what do we do here? He didn't move these armies, and I could just go capture Lugansk and get rid of the train. Although the train technically is going to help nobody because nobody's around it right now. I'm basically gonna get rolled from this side on. There's really nothing I can do about that. And I'm not gonna be able to get more resource access. I just have to see if I can hold out longer with what I've got. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to go on the hunt. So I think we're gonna attack. I wish this army was hurt, but it's not. But if I can cut it off, it'd be as effectively hurt. Yeah, that guy's just on a river, that guy's in the open. So I think what we do, what we'll do is we're gonna aim for the good old um get him. <laughs> the good old get him style. Uh six guys there, right? Yeah. He can go one, two, but he can't go off that. He can move up here. I wish I could get this guy involved, but he can't because that guy's right there. So we're going to have some pretty risky attacks without any kind of modifiers. This could be not so good. I'm thinking about doing a one-to-one -one here, maybe. Um, that's pretty bad because I won't probably be able to get 13 unless I roll like a 6. Um, or a 5. Um, I'd have to roll a 5 or a 6. I'd have a one-third chance of actually not taking a loss, which means I would lose a guy. Or I can just maybe mix up the forces here. Dilute the strength of this, maybe? Is that the, is that the answer? I want to take this guy and go one, two. And then... Replace him with two points. We'll bring the Kubans in instead. Maybe. Or, better yet, I'll take Kornilov and that guy. Bring Markov up here. So I got three, four, five, six. Bring the Cossacks. 
right there, and that is the very furthest they can go is into Rostov. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so that's the very furthest they can go. So they will hang out there in Rostov. It would be nice to maybe take out the red train. We're not going to do that. And we're going to attack these two here. So let's do that. So let's start with this one. And I kind of wonder if I should have put the tank there. Nah, that won't matter. Um, and we got one, two, three, four. Yeah, we have six. So it's one to one, but we have more units. Hopefully this pays off. Nope, it sure didn't. <laughs> a one to five. So this is not going to be maybe that good for us. It won't be that bad, I'm assuming, though. So on a one to one, he gets a four differential. We get a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we get a plus four on a one to one. It's an ADR. So yeah, at least that kills him, but we also suffer a loss, unfortunately. Yeah, it probably is worth giving them a hit. Even though we have like so little chance of rallying, unfortunately, this turn. And then that guy will attack there. Ooh, do, am I going to advance after combat? That is a risky proposition. If I advance, then if the logistics chart comes up, he will lose, and I'm fine. Actually, I won't be fine, because I'll have to cut me off, so I can't advance. Yeah, okay, so we'll attack there. Dang, I thought I was going to be able to cut him off. That's not really going to happen, is it? Hmm. I mean, stupid. No, I have to do that, or I have to be the garrison there, and I'm so low on garrisons right now. I need to save them. I was thinking, I have ideas. Anyway, I'll attack that right there. This is also a one to one combat. Yeah, that's okay. Three, so he has a two value. I have how many guys attacking? I think four. 4 times 3 is 12, that's 14, 16, 18, 17, so I have a plus 15 on a 1 to 1, that's a DR result. Dead. Boom. Okay, so that actually really helps us out here, killing off two very weak armies. I almost want to advance. Oof, I basically could. I think I can. Yeah, I think I can. Because he still gets a draw supply from being here, or from the river. Ooh, that's deadly. That's dangerous, dangerous there. That's gonna put it's gonna put Zaritsyn in a little press here. He's gonna have to bring this army down, and this army's gonna have to come up and do something. I mean, he could maybe get twelve points around this guy, but it's six, so that's still. Make sure the coupons. Yeah, they're still good. Yeah. Okay, maybe that was the breakthrough we needed. But again, we're gonna get rolled hard here. But the, that turn, they already went. So that's one thing we have to take into account is that they've already gone. Okay. Okay, so now the south gets to respond. They don't have a lot available now because a lot of guys went over to the southwest, right? So all we have is like that army, we have that army, and this weakened one here, and a flotilla. Okay, so do we make an attack on this guy? We almost have to. But if I lose, it's going to be bad, bad news. Well, maybe what we try to do is just fortify Zaritsyn and keep it from falling. 
Although we know that he can also just come up here and cut it off. Although he really can't cut it off unless he gets all the way up here and he can't go that way because he doesn't have supply until he takes Zardidson. So yeah, we're gonna have to just protect Zardidson. I think we're gonna go one, two, and we'll just maybe put him there and take this army and go one, two, three and block him that way, because that way he can't just attack it next turn if somehow he wins initiative. And I will not attack. And I think the 16th army is just gonna chill. Yeah, okay. Uh, logistics, that army got out, or we didn't have to, we played a little game of chicken and we thought about it, but you know, we're okay, we're good. Actually, we couldn't have done what we were thinking earlier, but hey, that's okay. Everybody's in supply. Um, nobody gets healed by the bread train, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and see if we can get our own guys healed. We only heal on one, so we, I know we have like two guys there, so let's just see. I'll make him the red guy, the Tarek. Nope. And I think there's just one injured guy, right? Is there, no, there's a whole bunch, isn't there? So I rolled for two. All right, there's two more. Top is red. Ooh, the bottom rallies. Yes. Brilliant. That's big. Very, very big. All right, over here, the Alexeyev unit. No, it would have on a normal turn. Uh, let's see if that 8th army will rally. It does not. Let's see if the one is right in there. It does not. Um, is there anybody injured in this stack? Oh yeah, that guy was injured, so let's roll for him. No, that popped out. Yes, he rallied. Wow, that is incredible luck. Very good. Nice. All right, the whites just really nicely um, getting the good rallies there. Oh yeah, and the corner me, oh, we forgot about that one. I know it needs to, and it does not rally, thank, thankfully. All right, let's pan out and let's go see about um, the unit in Poland. Does not. Let's see if this third army does. It does. And most importantly, probably for this attack on Petrograd. I got two armies up there. We'll make the seventh, which is the top one, the red die. Oh, this one rallies. So that's helpful for them. And that's all those armies there. They're good. There's one here. It does not. And then we have those two guys there. I think they're the only ones, right? Yeah, so let's see those two. And they will make this one the red. Yes. Bingo. All right, perfect. So that is anybody. I think I don't want to pick up any of my garrisons. I think they're fine as they are right now. And I'm happy with the white ones too. I really can't change them. All right, so that is the end of the logistics chit. So let's see what comes up next. Let's see, Siberians. So once again, they're just up here gonna hold up. Um, there's not a whole lot they can do because there's no really good defensive terrain. So the best they can do is just kind of throw sacrificial units forward and then put the best units in here, right? So that's probably gonna be these guys. Stay in Omsk and then we'll take the Siberians. Yeah, and they will also go in there. So there is that. And then I think we'll just put these two guys together there. And that's just the best we're gonna do. That's gonna be the hold up position.
pulls shit, they are happy. They will not do anything. And then we have AIF. Again, they are not going to do anything. They're pretty chill. They're so surprised they're here. They're like, wow, way to go, boys. All right, east front. So here we're going to see what we can actually put together here with the, the uh, onslaught. Inevitable as it is. So let's see how we can do this. We've got to take that stack down. So we got one, two, three. We can get them there. Uh, we really need to go for almost a complete surround if we can. So one, two, three. But we really can't do a complete surround. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, one, two, three. Actually, no, we need to leave a space. Oh, no, they can actually go one off. Okay, that'll work. Do I want to attack this turn? It's four, eight, seven, nine. It is one to one, but it's just going to be three units each. Um, I do have like not lots of nice modifiers. Three, six, seven, eight. Um, and then he's got some. I mean, yeah. I mean, we don't really. I'd rather wait. I'd rather wait on this one. Although he may get another attack, but he's already moved, so I think I'll wait. Which may be kind of a total mistake, but we're gonna make it work. So yeah, we'll do that. Because if we can cut him off and get a retreat result, then all those guys will die. So maybe that was kind of a mistake to hold myself up so so close to the edge of the map. Eh, we'll find out. The Northwest is chilling. They are hanging out in Petrograd. Very happy. We'll see how long I stay happy, though. The field staff chit will come to attack Petrograd. That's going to be its main goal in actually resisting. Let's see, there we go. So we did, I do have some other forces that are going to be able to come in, especially this army I've just put over here. So it's going to start coming over just to help out in case this attack stalls out again. And we're going to go one two, three, and it will eventually join, but not this turn. So yeah, here we go again. We got a eight to three attack, so that is a two to one. They get no defense. They do get the Baltic fleet. All right, this might actually crack them. So that's a one and a three. So three times two is six, and they get that modifier of three, so that's nine. Defensively, they get two, to, uh, so they get six, so it's a plus three on a two to one. It's an ADR result, little a, little d, r result, so. Yeah, this guy will get hurt. He has to retreat two hexes. One, two. And this army will go in and seize Petrograd. All right, so there we go. That's sort of restoring a little bit of order. And now the Northwest Army is reeling. No longer on the coast. I'll have to see if that Baltic unit goes away or not. I'm not sure if it does since we suffered that result. And the last shit is the North and Islamic Front. And they are also chilling. They're not going to do anything. So there we go. That was turn 11. So down here, some interesting moves are being made. Killed two armies, very good down here. So this has gotten much tighter, but again, the inevitable is sweeping down through here. Um, ousted from Petrograd, we just saw. The inevitable white hunt down over there. The north still chilling. And that is basically our entire map. You can see I made a little note to myself so I wouldn't forget what turn it was again anymore. All right, and then 
as you can see, when we come back, we will head to October 12th, 1919.